Greetings, mortals. Today, I talk about how Dungeon World seamlessly blends combat and role-playing in a way that 5e never could. Welcome to Tabletop Sandbox, where we talk about all things TTRPG. I am, of course, the only person living with entirely correct opinions, also known as Harrison Tarr. In 5e, there's this distinct divide between roleplay and combat. And there's this invisible wall between them that is crossed whenever the players roll initiative. Once you step over that line of initiative and into combat, there's an entirely new set of rules that comes along that is much more crunchy and gamified than the rest of the game. It also happens to be the part of the game that draws most people to 5e. But once you step into combat, everything is broken down into six second intervals and turns, and there's a turn order and a very specific list of things that you're able to do on your turn and what you can do this turn or you have to wait till next turn and specific time limits for spells and everything like that. Basically, it gets very complicated. And when it get com and when it get and when it get complicated, it gets slow. And when D&D combat gets complicated, it gets slow. And when it gets slow, it gets boring. And there are dozens, if not hundreds of videos on YouTube talking about how you can speed up your combat in D&D. I'm here to propose to you a different option. Instead of, you know, hacking apart the rules of combat or ignoring some rules or adding some more, to speed it up and make it more interesting, just play a game that's already figured it out. I'm talking about Dungeon World. Dungeon World solves this problem of slow and boring combat in two major ways. Firstly, it eliminates the not too difficult, but still time-consuming math of D&D 5e and makes all of the math very simple. Coincided with simple rules, things just flow much smoother, much more quickly in Dungeon World when it comes to combat. Secondly, and this is one of the principles of Dungeon World, in Dungeon World you start and end with the fiction. Mechanics are a way to facilitate fiction. The fiction is not facilitated by the mechanics, which is often how it works in D&D. So, a quick overview of how simple the math and mechanics of Dungeon World is. Firstly, there's no such thing as attack rolls. When you manage to deal damage to something as defined by the rules of Dungeon World, you just roll your damage die. Secondly, that damage die does not correspond to what specific weapon you're wielding or how you're wielding it or how talented you are with it. Instead, every single class has a damage die. And every time you roll damage, you roll that die. If you're a more martially focused class, like the fighter or barbarian, your die is going to be a higher. And if you're a wizard or a bard, your die is going to be lower. These class damage dice roll from d4 to d12 for the Barbarian, of course. Instead of having attack rolls to hit the enemy's armor class, instead, players and monsters have an armor value. Whenever you take damage, you subtract your armor value from that damage. Which, if you ask me, is a much more sensical way to deal with armor because it reduces damage. It doesn't guarantee you're not going to get a hit at all. Next, you have low HP in Dungeon World. Your HP is equal to your base constitution that comes with your class and your constitution score, which ranges from, I think, seven or eight to 18. So your average Dungeon World character is going to have under 20 hit points. This low HP value for PCs and for monsters make it so that one, the math is simpler and also combat is quicker, and every single time damage is rolled, it's more meaningful than when you have 10th level 5e characters with three digit hit points just going at each other for two hours of game time. This makes combat quick and brutal, and it also makes every single roll more meaningful. Another thing that does that is, as I said before, that in Dungeon World you're supposed to start and end with the fiction. The core mechanic of Dungeon World is moves. And basically how moves work is when a situation is triggered in the fiction, then you roll for it, and then interpreting that role, the GM decides how it plays out. 
As an example, the primary melee attack move is called Hack and Slash, and let me read it for you. When you attack an enemy in melee, roll plus strength. So that's the fictional trigger. When you roll an attack against an enemy in melee, and every time you do that, that move is triggered. The move goes on to describe the different outcomes from different results of that roll, but once you have rolled and you determine which of those outcomes it is, you go directly back into the fiction, describing the events of that roll. Do you completely destroy your enemy? Do you clash against them and wound each other in turn? Or do you fail in your attack and receive damage instead? This clash begins and ends with the fiction, with the die roll in the center just being a way to discern the outcome of situations that are uncertain, which is how die rolls should usually be used, but in D&D, oftentimes you'll run into a situation where the player says, I roll insight, and then the DM tells them what they notice about the other person, or maybe they just say, you know this person is lying, and then the player decides what to do. And really, in that whole interaction, the fiction has not interacted with it at all, and that leads to poor immersion. Some people enjoy that type of game without much role-playing. I personally enjoy a much more dramatic and narrative-focused game. This idea of it being narrative-focused and dramatic also applies in combat, where there's no specific time limit for how long a round or a turn is. There's not any rounds, there's not initiative, and each player does something. It's less of a turn and more like shots in an action movie. I like to tell my players, imagine that each time you do something, it's like a shot of the heroes in the Avengers, and every time they do something, whether that be one big punch or firing a couple arrows or launching an entire barrage of explosives, that is their kind of shot, their turn. And that is usually encompassed by a single roll, and at the most, two. Dungeon World eliminates your worries about using the action economy of your character to the best of your ability and learning how to play the game optimally because there isn't an action economy, and there's not a limit for how much you can do things. Even the magic in this game, you don't have a set number of slots. You can lose access to spells, but that's only one of the options available to you as a player when your spellcaster rolls a partial success. In Dungeon World, combat is far less quantified and far more narrative. And with low HP and auto hits, it makes combat quick and brutal, but not necessarily deadly. Because any move or any action really at all is perfectly viable in combat. There's no kind of optimal choice, though sometimes it does just make the most sense to clock the guy in front of you upside the head with a hammer. But, but, but unlike D&D, the peak optimization of using your character's abilities isn't really a major factor. It inspires more creativity than 5e, which inspires learning how to play the game to the best of your ability. Now again, I'm not entirely bad-mouthing D&D combat. I enjoy D&D and I enjoy the combat, but as we all know, according to these hundreds of videos on the internet, most people wish it ran a little bit smoother and was a bit quicker. But it's not necessarily because it takes so long that we have a problem with it. It's because it's boring. When it's not your turn, you have to sit there, and especially if you're in a large group, you have to wait for every single person around the table to go and multiple monsters to go before it gets back to your turn to do something. Whereas in Dungeon World, you can just jump in as soon as courtesy allows. Generally, you want everybody to get a chance to play, and hopefully the GM will facilitate this, but really there's no limit. If you want to jump in and aid this person as they're attempting to do this cool thing, go for it. You don't have to wait for your turn. People wouldn't care that 5e combat took three hours in a boss battle if every single minute of that combat was exciting and engaging for those players. But that's just not the case. Dungeon World's combat system, or rather lack of a combat system, trims the fat and makes it so the only parts of combat that remain are interesting and engaging for hopefully all the players if they're paying attention, and 
they don't take too long. In Dungeon World, combat is usually over quickly, and every single role and action within that combat meant something and was dramatic, which, as we all know, is one of my favorite things for my games to be. Subscribe for more enlightened observations and me looking into lesser known games than D&D. And remember, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Good night, mortals.